Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I just want to basically let you know that I'm going to do y'all a favor. I want to read y'all just, we're not going to read all of this because it's too much. We're going to start here, okay, and we're going to read till I stopped writing right there, okay? Now this is, I believe, 40 some pages, get, get, get out of the way, 40 pages so far. Not to mention the attachments that's going to be attached to this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part of the QTAM lawsuit. Now, I will be sharing this with you. Here's the thing. QTAM lawsuits are supposed to be sealed. The only problem is this is respecting the American people, so this will not be sealed. And no one will order it be sealed. Why? Because it involves your interests. So let's sit up here and talk about it since they are, meaning you all, entitled, i.e., having a right, shall be entitled, or, sorry, not you all, this is the banks. <laughs> sorry, we're asking for a stay. This is the section asking for a stay. So since they, the banks, are entitled, i.e., having a right, shall be entitled to receive from the controller the currency, neither can claim, meaning the treasury or the banks, a hardship or a burden as a result of the stay that's supposed to be stay got some i will be editing this later or moratorium as it is not sought respecting the funds of the comptroller of the currency only respecting the extra burdensome extorted payments associated with the mortgage trade industry mortgages are being traded on the market in the form of securities as a mortgage-backed security or as mortgage-backed securities however what no one speaks as to is the fact that the financial institutions are making profits off of the interest of the trading of the mortgages on the markets, but are not crediting the, bar crediting the borrower for the aforementioned profiteering. This violates the terms of the agreement in the Truth of Lending Act and must be halted without delay or save further damage being done are harm to both person and property which the court must protect we ask this court to order that all financial records associated with the aforementioned march 9 1933 act the amendment to the federal reserve act of march 9 1933 section 401 subsection 18 paragraph 6 and presidential proclamation 2039 to include but not exclude any and all loans records from the period that period 1933 to the present day maintained by the treasury the federal reserve and or membered banks and or agents and representatives and informal um haha <laughs> excuse me oh, oh okay sorry let's do that former representatives zeros these records will be utilized to justify the suit and prove malfeasance. This is me letting everybody know 40 pages of that type of language where nobody's making any accusations. Well, I can show you the beginning. Hold on. Those of you who got a computer and go real, real slow, you'll be able to read the rest of it, but not going to read it now because it's not time. Like I said, a lot of writing. You see the little highlights and all that stuff? Woo-wee! We even talk about that and get past that. No, we, this is because we're doing this with somebody else as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the different topics throughout this. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're detailing, the whole thing. Okay, this is what we're detailing. Like I said, uh, this is a draft from a motion I was doing for someone else and I decided, wait a minute, let's make this for the QTAM because it is bringing up everything else and then what I'm going to do is get rid of most of this for the two people because they don't need to bring all of this up. See how we say the Organic Constitution, California, United States of America, I am bringing that up now only because I use that with someone else, but it's not going to be California, okay? We'll talk about all of this when the time comes. I'm just trying to tell all of you what most of you don't realize is you're not going to get anywhere. Let me explain to you what a Qutam lawsuit is. Let me explain to you what I did in 2012 and how I'm going after my money. Because there's nothing they can do about it. That's why we filed it on the record. 
they should not have they should not have taken my points that I was bringing up and brought it up on behalf of all of the attorney generals if the state attorney generals had brought it up individually I couldn't say anything but because the federal government brought it up afterwards after I brought it to their attention talking about they declined to intervene well look when the government declines to intervene let's find out what happens FCA the Federal Claims Act imposes civil liability on those who defraud the United States government United States x rail versus Pather, Prather and Brookdale senior living communities authorities Q Quitam, Qtam, Quitam, Qtam suits in which private parties bring civil action in the government's name. United States. Oh, quoting this case, when a private relator, relator? I mean, I've been relating things all my life. When a private relator initiates an FCA case, the United States may intervene and conduct the action itself or decline to intervene. Ladies and gentlemen, once they give a declination, that's what the word decline is, a declination. Once they give a declination, guess what? They don't have a right to speak up on behalf of the United States in that matter anymore. See, that's what the Attorney General, when it declined to intervene, it couldn't go into court and ask for a demure. Because that's exactly what the Attorney General did. The Attorney General asked the judge to demure the case. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, as bringing a case like this and representing the United States do you know as I mentioned to people and this is what they got afraid of that I can convene a grand jury I'm bringing a case on behalf of the United States ladies and gentlemen it's not always just civil see they're speaking civil liability but representing the United States is not just a civil issue as relator it's wherever justice may lead Shh, don't tell nobody Q-Town Relator receives 15 to 25 percent of any recovery the government if the government intervenes, but could recover 25 to 30 percent if the government declines to intervene. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. These are codes. We don't go by the code. You want to go to the actual act. This is the 1866 Act, and this is the so-called Civil Rights Act of 1866. Same place they get the 1983 suits and 1982 suits, 1985 suits, 1988 suits same law just thought I'd point that out to you guys so ladies and gentlemen gentlemen lady, 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 ladies and gents this is what we're getting ready to do and the amount of things that we are bringing up let's just say we're bringing this up on behalf of all of the Americans out there who have been defrauded as a result of the failure to follow the act as written the more and more, let me see if I can show you this. Uh, we're going to control F and we're going to, let's do banking. Banker in K E R. Now I put in banker. Okay, now that's going to give me some bankers because that's a banker's acceptance. But I ain't looking for those bankers. I'm looking for one more banker. Not that one. Ah, let's say, nor funds of the American people placed on deposit with the banks and enable the bankers to make loans. So we're not worried about that banker. What I want you to do is pay attention. Uh, not until such a federal statute is passed and enforced to, will complete confidence in our banking system be restored, nor the funds of the American people placed on deposit in those banks and enabling the bankers to make loans to finance transactions. You see, when you deposit your note, the banks are able to create currency. Okay? Not my fault. Let me go ahead and show you something. I want you to hear about what they said about bankers. No, not that New England bankers. Come on now. Oh, wrong document. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. That's the four pages I got. No, we have to go here. We have to go to the actual act. Let's see if it's saved. Where's my bankers? Bankers, bankers, bank. There it is, right there at the very top. Started from the bottom, didn't I? I done made it to the top, y'all. Now we don't want bankers' acceptance. We want bankers. All these bankers around the United States. Okay, pay attention. What? is a reserve 
It is a sum of money retained in the banks to meet the emergency, and yet, when an emergency arises, a banker will tell us that he cannot use his reserves except under penalty. Uh, that ain't what I'm looking for. I didn't read ahead. I'm sorry. I thought that was it. Uh, no. No, that's not it. I'm looking for not these two bankers. Where is it? Okay, this one right here. And yet we have people all over the country from one end to the other calling themselves bankers. And all they know is how to shave notes at the excess rate of interest. They are not bankers! Which is not true because this act, the presidential proclamation plus this act makes them bankers. That's exactly what they're talking about. When they talk about the little banks, they're not talking about the little mom and pop banks. You need to understand, if a struggling man wants to get a place here in Washington as a stereographer or a typist, he has to have a civil service examination. And yet, we have people all over the country being bankers. This is what they didn't appreciate, making everybody bankers. Oops, my bad. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't want to be a banker. Somebody just said, hey, you be the positive stuff, you a banker. Just that simple. Okay, it's it, it just that simple. I deposit stuff in a bank, I'm a banker. That's what the law says. Let me show y'all one more thing. Let's see, not any notes, because Supreme Court says any notes doesn't mean any notes, and that's not true. When it comes to this act, any notes means promissory notes. As a matter of fact, let's look up promissory notes, okay, to make sure that any notes is talking about promissory notes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, eh, let's do notes. And then when we got notes, P, R, O, I know I spelled that wrong. I always spell promissory. Look, wait, how did I add that? That was supposed to be an S, not an A. Let's do it this way. I ain't got time, people. I really don't. I'm, it's going on 1 o'clock. It's 1230. But going on 1 o'clock, I'm about to go to sleep. I am tired. I've been up since, what is it this morning, 5.30 and 4 o'clock yesterday. Got to get through all these to get to the one that says promissory notes. One second. Not those. Wait a minute. Maybe I missed it. See, I'm, I am tired. Give me a second. Put y'all on pause. I'll find it. No need. It only took a second for me to sit up there and focus enough to spell promissory. Ladies and gentlemen, subject to such limitations, restrictions, and regulations as the Federal Reserve Board may prescribe, this is in Section 4, the very same section that I keep highlighting. So let's go to this page, and I'll show it to you. Okay, it's in this section, but it's here. Okay, promissory notes. Federal Reserve may prescribe the Federal Reserve Bank may make advances to any individual focus on individual okay on the promissory notes of such individual pay attention such advances shall be made for a period not exceeding 90 days that's why you hear these people talking about nine it could take up to 90 days because that's the policy people this is where they get it from the reason why it could take up to 90 days, that's for the Treasury to issue the Treasury check. Now, that's a promissory note. Please understand, they intended for it to be a promissory note. This is Section 13, um, well, Section 403, Subsection 13 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended on March 9, 1933. Do your research, people. The information, everything you need is right there. The suit that we're bringing is to make them follow the act as written. Tired of them sitting up there taking people's property from them. So the only way we can do this is bring a suit. I can't tell you how I'm going to bring the suit. If I tell you that gives them time to prepare. But I guarantee you it will be unlike anything that's been done before. And yes, it will be within their rules and following the law. We will let you know more about this later. Gotta go. Less than 15 minutes is what I was striving for. Adios.